Hello? Hey, buddy. Just calling you back. I heard you had some real nice hardware over there at Paul's Hardware. Oh, hey, Kyle. How's it going? Yeah, um, you sound a little weird. Did you, like, drop your phone again or something? Anyway, yeah, I got the uh, the new 18-core i9-10980XE from Intel. Just uh, testing it right now. Uh, actually, it's not too bad considering the price drop. That's great, Paul. I was thinking maybe you had those new Threadripper 3 CPUs too, though. Did AMD send you samples? I'm sorry, did sample samples? What? what are samples. You? I know you and AMD are real tight, real good friend. They sent you new Threadripper samples? Actually, yeah, a big Threadripper box just arrived recently. I was planning to open it up after I finish off the uh, 10980. Uh, hello? Kyle? That's weird. Usually he ends phone calls by saying, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. <clears throat> Excellent! DeepCool knows that there's more than one way to cool a CPU, so for air cooling fans, they made the Assassin 3, a 280 watt TDP tower cooler that stays chilly and silent with seven heat pipes, dual 140 millimeter fans, and a polished nickel finish. Or if you prefer water cooling, the Castle 360EX is a 360 millimeter all-in-one with tasteful RGB lighting, exclusive anti-leak technology, and a copper base custom designed for maximum cooling performance. To find out more about DeepCool's Assassin 3 or the Castle 360EX, click the sponsor links in the description. Okay guys, I have a big impressive package here and I'm gonna show it off to everyone. This time it's from AMD and I think you know what that means. It's unboxing time. Just go ahead and get the lid off here. What the heck, there's nothing in here. It just, just smells like some ungodly mix of durian and stinky tofu. I don't understand, this, make, this just got here. Nobody else knows this is here. What? All right, hold on. I gotta call Kyle back. This makes no sense at all. Kyle, I have a huge problem. I don't know what happened, but my Threadripper 3 CPUs, they're, they're just missing. They're they are not here. I got the box. They're not in the box. I was supposed to get the 32-core the, the 3970X and the 24-core 3960X. Okay, man, it's okay. Calm down. Just, uh, are you sure it's the right box? Did you tell anyone that they've arrived? Well, like, the, the box, the box arrived yesterday, and, like, you're the only one who I told about it, so I just opened it, and it's, it's empty. It's, it's completely empty. Whoa, whoa, wait, hold, hold on. You talked to me? I didn't even know you were getting samples. Did you, did you just say samples? Say that again? Samples. I mean, I know they were short on them. Samples. You never told me that they were giving you a sample. Sampo. Sampos. Lyle. No! I guess I might as well do an unboxing of the Intel 10980XE. Okay, so today is weird. Like, completely apart from the fact that my home was apparently burglarized and my CPUs were taken, I don't remember any time in the past when there have been directly competing CPU launches on the same day from two different companies. But here it is. Today we have the launch of Intel's newest high-end desktop processor, the 18-core 36-thread Core i9-10980XE, and then two new Threadripper 3 CPUs from AMD, the 32-core 64-thread 3970X and the 24-core 48-thread 3960X. And just look at the prices. Intel has cut the price of their 18-core in half just about, down to $1,000 for the 10980XE, whereas its predecessor, the 9980XE, sold for $1,900 to $2,000, while AMD is launching their 24-core and 32-core processors at $1,400 and $2,000, respectively. Go back four years ago and tell me that AMD and Intel would be launching competing high-end desktop CPUs on the same day, and that AMD would have the more expensive ones, and I probably would not have believed you. That said, I must give a huge shout out to Kyle, aka Bitwit, for collaborating on this video and providing me with the results for the Threadripper 3 CPUs, which I do not have here. Uh, we did a little swap, so both of our views could have the numbers for both Intel and AMD, as he said that his Intel 10980XC also mysteriously went missing, but check out his video for more on that situation, and I'll post a link to that in the description. Now, I really wanna get into my benchmark numbers, and there I am focusing primarily on raw CPU performance, as well as a bit of gaming, but when I say today is weird, it just is. For example, 
First and second gen Threadripper CPUs worked with X399 motherboards, but Threadripper 3 needs a new TRX40 board. That means there's no backwards compatibility on the motherboard side from AMD for this generation, whereas Intel's 10 series high-end desktop processors will still work in an existing Intel X299 motherboard as long as you do a BIOS update first. These are high-end desktop CPUs, so bear in mind there's a difference between high-end desktop and mainstream. They're going to use higher-end, more expensive motherboards and feature quad-channel memory support, as well as a lot more I.O. than mainstream platforms. Intel gives you 44 direct PCIe 3.0 lanes to their highest-end CPUs for connectivity, while AMD is giving you even more connectivity with 60 PCIe 4.0 lanes on the newest Threadripper 3 CPUs, and that's not even including the chipsets. It's just something to keep in mind if you're comparing today's launches on the AMD or Intel side with something like the recently launched 3950X, which I will be doing in my benchmark numbers today. This has 16 cores and 32 threads, which is a lot for a mainstream platform, but it is still based on the mainstream AM4 platform, dual channel memory, 20 PCIe 4.0 lanes for support. So you're gonna get a lot more with Threadripper 3 or Intel high-end desktop than you are with the mainstream CPUs, and that may or may not be a concern to you. AMD's Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, as well as the new Threadripper 3s, do have a couple nice features though. They're based on the seven nanometer lithography, whereas Intel is still working with 14 nanometer, and they feature native support for PCI Express Gen 4, as already mentioned. So Intel is coming into this launch with fewer cores, less connectivity, and a platform that's almost two and a half years old now. But they have also slashed their prices. Finally, Intel is the budget option in today's video with the $1,000 10980XE. Like I said, this is weird. Let's take a look at my testbed setups though. There are four of them this time around, technically five, but socket AM4 and X570 on AMD mainstream, socket LGA1151 with Z390 for Intel mainstream, socket LGA2066 with X299 for Intel high-end Core X CPUs, and then the new socket STRX4 motherboards with the AMD TRX40 chipset are for AMD's Threadripper 3 series CPUs, and those are all brand new. Now, all of my rigs are open test beds like this one, and I've made my best efforts to make them run the exact same memory, CPU, cooler, and graphics card where possible. For cooling on just about all the setups, we're using the NZXT Kraken X62, which is a 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. That is, except for the 9980XE numbers, I had an existing custom loop with an EK monoblock and a 360 millimeter rad on that setup. The memory setting we are going for is DDR4 3600 cast latency 16. We have a two by eight gig setup for my mainstream platforms and a four by eight gig quad channel setup for my high-end configurations. All these rigs are going to sport a 500 gig class M.2 NVMe SSD. The graphics card is the Asus ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti OC running at its out-of-the-box manufacturer settings and all the systems are running Windows 10 version 1903 with the latest updates. AMD Mainstream is using the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master Motherboard UEFI version F10A, which includes the latest AMD microcode updates, that's version 1.0.0.4B, by the way, and that one's powered by a Corsair HX1000i Platinum Power Supply. Intel Mainstream testbed is based on the ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate Motherboard and an EVGA Supernova G3 750 watt power supply. My Intel high-end desktop testbed uses the ASUS Prime X299 Edition 30, which is just newly launched. Very clean looking new motherboard from ASUS, and it's got the Cooler Master V1300 power supply. My i9-9980XE was tested on an ASUS Rampage 6 Extreme motherboard with a 1300 watt Thermaltake Tough Power Grand power supply. And all the high-end systems are using this G-Skill 32 gig Trident Z memory kit, mostly running at 3600 cast latency 16, and then for a couple of the configurations, I did the overclock setting by plugging in the XMP values. Lastly, the Threadripper 3s were tested by Kyle using an MSI TRX40 Creator motherboard and a Corsair Dominator Platinum 4x16 gig kit of DDR4, but also set to run at 3600 speed cast latency 16. So in total, we have eight CPUs in this roundup. High-end Intel represented by the 18 core, 10980XE, which I also ran in an overclock configuration with slightly faster memory using MCE and ASUS AI Auto OC. We also have the former top end 18 core 9980XE, which I was also running in MCE mode because otherwise the clock speeds can be very conservative for that chip. Mainstream Intel is represented by the 8 core Core i9-9900K and the 8 core 9900KS Special Edition, which runs at 5 gigahertz. For AMD, we have the mainstream 16 core Ryzen 9 3950X, as well as the 12 core Ryzen 9 3900X. And for Threadripper 3, we have the the new 32 core 3970X and the 24 core 3960X. And now let's get into some benchmarks, starting with frequencies, power draw, and temperatures. Here on this chart, I am showing you the peak frequency across all the tests that each CPU hits, usually on just a core or two, as well as the sustained average frequency during an IDA64 system stability test. Turbo tables have clearly been reconfigured for the 10980XE, 
and at stock it hit 5.44 gigahertz. But just very, very briefly, that was during GTA 5, by the way, which was impressive, but again, very, very brief. The all-core 2.89 gigahertz average that you see here is during IDA 64, which uses AVX instructions, triggering the AVX negative offset, which reduces the clock speed in order to reduce temperatures when dealing with AVX instructions. It's pretty effective, but it also results in a much lower clock speed. In the Blender test, the CPU ran at about 3.1 to 3.2 gigahertz across all cores at stock. Low clock speeds also cause very low temps though, which is nice, I guess, but I am glad I had time to also run this CPU with a set of overclock tests where the 10980XE was sitting comfortably just shy of 4.4 gigahertz across all cores, although the peak frequency was lower with the overclock setting compared to stock. It only got up to 4.9 gigahertz. Please note though that we didn't get overall peak frequencies for Threadripper 3, so I've left those values out of this chart. Next we have temperatures. These were also measured during the IDA64 stress test, both the average and maximum, as you can see here. While the 10980XE's performance was a bit lacking at stock, you can see why Intel might be hesitant to ship it at higher frequencies, as the temperature jumped from 45C to 65C after I enabled the overclock, about 20 degrees, but still staying well within the realm of reasonable operating temperatures, especially if you're comparing it to some of these Ryzen processors. That seems to indicate to me that there is more overclocking headroom with these processors, and we've seen 9980XE's overclock to 5 gigahertz across all cores, although that's only with very specific samples. I'd be curious if the 10980XE was able to overclock a little bit better. That said, all I wanted to do for my testing today was something that was relatively easy to implement as an overclock, and the ASUS AI OC is actually pretty functional in that regards, and I think that allowed me to get much more comparable benchmarks to throw up against our Threadripper 3 results. The Threadripper 3 results, meanwhile, were noticeably warmer, although they did maintain 3.9 to 4 gigahertz clock speeds, even though this is an all-core stress test going on 24 or 32 cores. The 3960X ran 8 to 9 degrees hotter than the 3970X, showing just how much an 80 hertz frequency difference can make when it's multiplied across so many cores, even if there are fewer cores on that chip compared to the 3970X. Power draw next is the other side of the efficiency discussion, and we're measuring full system draw during a Blender CPU render test, as well as peak draw across all tests. Note how much of a difference all core frequency makes in terms of power draw, with the 10980XE showing very good efficiency at stock, drawing just 245 watts on average, but then jumping up to 431 watts with the OC. Threadripper 3, meanwhile, ships with an all-core frequency range that scales with your cooling, so it will both generate more heat and run faster out of the box. Even with 24 or 32 cores at about 4 GHz, though, the Threadripper 3s are still below 400 watts average draw, edging out the overclocked 10980XE. And now let's get into some actual benchmarks, and I've gone ahead and sorted these so you can tell which ones are best, and I'm going to be comparing most of these using the 10980XE as sort of a baseline standard. So we can see how much benefit we get just with that overclock. We're about 32% faster by enabling MCE and that AI overclock. That allowed the 10980XE to break 10,000. Meanwhile, of course, those Threadripper CPUs, just with their massive core and thread counts in a test like Cinebench R20 that takes advantage of all the cores and threads, massive scores of over 13,000 and over 16,000 respectively, that 3970X score is 117% faster than the 10980XE, but it's also 100% more expensive. So keep that in mind as you watch the rest of these benchmarks and let me know if the 3970X is worth twice as much as the 10980XE. Let's move over to Cinebench R20 single threaded mode this is kind of the great equalizer because we're only looking at the performance of a single core on each cpu the 3000 series cpus from amd have uh, gained a lot here and they're actually in the lead with scores of 530 and 534 for the 3950x Note that the 9980XE is sitting at the bottom here with 447. That is absolutely due to its low clock speed out of the box. And my overclock on the 10980 actually did better with all cores than it did with a single core. It was actually slightly slower with a single core, which is why the overclock performance is actually a few points behind the stock performance. Next up is CPU mark, which is part of the pass mark performance test suite. We're going to be looking at overall scores, and then we'll move on to single thread. Overall massive score from the 3970X almost broke 50K, 49,370. That is the highest score I have ever seen on this test, although the 3960X was not too far behind with a score of 47,700. Meanwhile, we have a grouping of CPUs right around the 30,000 range, 10980XE overclock coming in at the top of that heap, but the 3950X and 3900X doing a very good job considering that they cost $750 and $500 respectively. Here's the CPU Mark single-threaded test, and again, the 3950X comes out on top. 
The Threader Pro 3 performance here is also quite good and they're just shy of the 3000 mark. They're actually right up there between the 9900K and the 9900KS, which were formerly the champions in this area, at least the 9900K was before the 3950X came out. But of course, single thread performance suffers if you're not running at a high frequency, which is why the 10980XE and 9980XE are down at the bottom. Next up is Blender, which is rendering software, and uh, this is the Splash Fishy Cat render, which goes by pretty quick. Usually it lasts 20 plus seconds, but with the 3970X and 3960X, we broke not just the 20 second mark, but the 10 second mark, 9.07 and 9.77 seconds, respectively. Again, that's really fast performance from the 3970X, but the 3960X is so close to it, it's like, why are you gonna spend the extra 600 bucks for the 3970X when the 3960X is doing so well? Here's the BMW 27 test. And again here, this is a time in seconds, so lower is better. The 3970X did it in 51.1 seconds. Broke the one minute mark. 3960X couldn't quite do that, but it was still very close with 62.3 seconds. Meanwhile, the 10980XE took 144.8 seconds. Bear in mind here, the 9980XE and 10980XE are really, really similar chips. It's really just the clock speed difference between them that's making the difference. Since the 9980XE was running with MCE enabled, so it's hitting higher clock speeds, it will generally be outperforming the 10980XE. That's part of the reason why I included overclock numbers for the 10980XE, and also because I had the time, because I wasn't testing Threader for 3, because Kyle was doing that instead. Here's Adobe Premiere Media Encoder, and this is uh, testing a 3-minute 4K H.264 encode at 40 megabits per second. And again, the 3970X wins with a time of 122 seconds, and the 3960X is like, hey, I'm right here, why do you cost $600 more than me? Meanwhile, once again, we have a slugfest in the middle between AMD's 3000 series mainstream CPUs and the 10980XE and the 9980XE. If you're looking at this and thinking, why would I ever buy a 10980XE when the 3950X exists? You have to bear in mind connectivity and other features of that platform that might make it more appealing. But of course, the 3950X, it's a beastly processor for 750 bucks even. So I think for a lot of people, that's still gonna be the processor to go for. Here's Handbrake 1.3. This is a video transcode test, uh, taking a 4K video and transcoding it down to 1080 using the fast preset. We have the encoding speed and frames per second, as well as the time in seconds, both listed here side by side, so you can look at both. And here, for some reason, the 3960X actually performed a little bit better. Kyle actually came back and retested the 3970X, but it was pretty late and I wasn't able to update this slide for it. So it does have more performance available in this test. Meanwhile, though, the 10980XE showing that it can actually get pretty close to the 3960X and 3970X when it's doing the right test and trying out the right thing. 55.1 average frames per second is not bad, but again, you gotta overclock your 10980XE to get all the performance you want out of it. Let's move over to V-Ray 4.10.07. This is a score in K samples, so here higher is better, and the Threader Pro 3 3970X managed to break 40,000 again breaking barriers that I've never seen broken before, so that's an impressive score. The falloff looks a little bit more linear here, and once again, the 10980XE, at least in overclocked mode, was able to keep up a little bit better, but again, the 10980XE at stock was not able to outpace the 3950X. And the last of my CPU focus performance tests is Corona 1.3. Again, time in seconds here, so the 3970X wins with a score of just 31 seconds total taken to complete this test. The 3960X coming in just six seconds behind it though, and the 10980XE coming in about eight seconds slower than that. That makes the 3970X 84% faster than the 10980XE stock. That means compared to the 10980XE stock, the 3970X is 84% faster, 3960X was 54% faster, and the overclocked version of itself was 27% faster. Let's switch over to some gaming tests, starting with 3 Mark Firestrike Ultra. I don't think people are gonna be shopping for these high-end desktop CPUs, specifically for their gaming performance, but often people build computers that they use for multiple things, so maybe you're interested in what the gaming performance happens to be alongside the CPU compute performance as well. And heck, we might as well throw some anomalies into the benchmarks anyway, because the 10980XE OC actually wins in this test with a physics score of 33,671, and the physics is the test that's primarily focused on the CPU's performance. 3950X was just a smidge behind. Meanwhile, the 
3960X and 3970X are much further down the stack, actually further towards the bottom, uh, playing around with the 9900K and KS, which means to me that this is probably a software issue. This test is probably not running exactly the way it should with these processors, or the software is simply choking on the fact that there are so many cores and threads available with the Threadripper 3 CPUs, so it's not using them to their maximum potential. That said, the actual graphics performance between all of these CPUs was pretty much the same. They were all within a margin of about two to four uh, percent performance-wise between each other. Meanwhile, over on 3 Mark Time Spy, we have some more anomalous performance uh, for the 3970X in particular. This was another test that uh, Kyle didn't attempt to rerun, and honestly, this just boiled down to the fact that it's a holiday week. We have a lot going on. There was not enough time to properly retest this, so I've included these numbers because those were the results, but the 3970X obviously should not be performing worse in the CPU-focused test than the 3950X, given that it has double the amount of cores and threads available. That said, for some reason, the 3960X performed really well and actually had the top CPU score in this test with 13,565. Meanwhile, the 10980XE managed to come in second with a score of 13,450. Now we're going to run through a few actual games. We're playing this at 1920 by 1080 because you want to play at a lower resolution if you're trying to test CPU performance because otherwise you're going to be testing graphics performance and all the results will be the same. These are also tests where Intel's mainstream 9900K and KS typically rule the roost, so it's kind of cool to see the 10980XE overclock coming in with the win here and an overall frame rate of 162.8. Even its 1% low is really nice there at 123.5. And this was also a test where all four Intel CPUs managed managed to come in with better scores than all four AMD CPUs. That's not the case for all of my game tests though. In GTA 5, the 9900KS once again reclaimed its crown with an average frame rate of 176. 3950X was coming in just behind it though, actually 3950X and 3900X, both with 168 average frames per second. Meanwhile, GTA 5 proving that it prefers higher frequency to more cores because all of the high-end desktop CPUs are in the bottom four. Finally, we have Metro Exodus here, and once again, the 9900KS is on top with an average frame rate of 111.8, 9900K right behind it, then the 3900X, then the 3950X, and then once again, all the high-end desktop CPUs. If you're going for purely gaming performance, a high-end desktop CPU is probably not where you want to go, but it is good to know that you can still, of course, game with these processors. You're just going to be looking at a drop-off of 5 to 15 percent, depending on the game that you're playing and the resolution. Once again, if you're playing at a higher resolution, like 4K, for example, and you're more GPU-bound, you're not going to be seeing this type of variance between CPUs. And now for some overall slides, just to give you guys sort of a look at all of my tests combined together in one sticky pot. This is the overall compute performance here, so I just took the compute tests, and we're using the 10980XC as the baseline here, so you can see, for example, the 3900X was about 5% slower in the compute tests than the 10980XE, whereas the last gen 9980XE was actually just a smidge faster, 100.8% of its compute performance, but again, it has MCE enabled, which meant it was running at a higher frequency. 3950X was also beating it, and this is also, I think, a good reason to show that you should be overclocking the 10980XE if you happen to get one, because the 10980XE overclock was able to beat the 3950X. And then, of course, the Threadripper 3s are are way ahead, 47% and 58.4% faster because they got all them cores and threads. Here's the same accumulated performance look at gaming in particular, and uh, once again here using the 10980XC as the 100% baseline. We're not seeing too much of a drop off for the 3960X, there is more of a drop off for the 3970X. Again, bear in mind there are some tests that had anomalous performance with the 3970X in gaming in particular, so those are probably skewing the results somewhat. That said, you can get more performance with a CPU that has higher frequencies across the board, 9900K and KS, about 6% and 10% faster. And then even the overclock 10980XE, even though it wasn't hitting as high of a single core frequency in the overall tests, it still managed to get about 4.5% more performance out of the games than the non-overclocked version of itself. And here's my final chart, which is price versus performance. Again, with the 10980XE as the 100% baseline for all the comparison tests, and you can sort of see the relative performance down there at the bottom. And you might be thinking to yourself, is 58.4% more performance worth 100% more of the price for the 3970X compared to the 10980XE? That might be one way to look at this. You might also look at it and say, well, 47% more performance for the 3960X might be worth 
40% more of the price since it's 1400. And that seems to be the indicator to me that the 3960X just is a much better priced compared to what you're able to get out of it, at least with the tests that we were running today. And then I also like to show this because the relative gaming performance is just generally pretty minimal. So it's just going to show you that if you are considering the various prices of CPUs in this range, you should be picking more based on the compute performance that's available to you than the gaming performance, because chances are the gaming performance is going to mostly be a wash unless you're playing at 720p resolution, which you, you really shouldn't be. So I am just so confused coming to the end of this because these videos used to be fairly formulaic coming to the end. I would say something to the effect of like, AMD did a good effort here, Intel still has a little bit better performance in gaming at low resolutions, but uh, Intel stuff is still overpriced, so buy the AMD. At least that's been what I've been saying for the past couple years on the mainstream side. Now, Intel stuff is cheaper. AMD is more expensive, $1,000 more expensive for the 32 core, even a $400 upsell for the 24 core, which is a lot of money depending on who you are. Also consider motherboard pricing as part of it. TRX 40 boards are brand new, prices are still TBD, but if you look at X399 boards that have been out for a while, they tend to start at about $300 and up. And Intel X299s are available in the $200 plus range, granted for slightly cut down boards. So you're looking at a significant investment on the Threadripper 3 side. But that said, I think AMD has once again changed the layout of the consumer PC marketplace with this launch, and they deserve full credit for their successes here, as well as in the past few years, getting us out of the quad-core mainstream rut, being first to 7 nanometer and PCI Express Gen 4, and providing a solid mix of performance per dollar and reliability across their product stack. So here's my conclusion for AMD, in the immortal words of the streets, you're fit. But my gosh, don't you know it. As AMD racks up wins, they have gained clout. As their clout has increased, so has their ability to charge more for top tier parts. The 3970X at two grand is the proof for me that price does not scale well with the performance, in my opinion, especially compared to the 3960X, but it's the flagship for now, so it fetches a premium price. Remember when all Intel had was eight core high-end desktop CPUs, and then they launched the 6950X 10 core, and they charged $1,700 for it over the price of the $1,000 eight cores? Well, AMD gets to do that now. Good job, AMD. Meanwhile, I do have to hand it to Intel for biting the bullet and slashing their prices. Let's face it, that's all they could do. They do not have an answer for Threadripper 3 top-end CPUs right now on anything resembling a consumer platform. If the 3950X's performance isn't quite grabbing you, and you need a high-end desktop rig for that PCIe connectivity and expansion slots, and, and if Threadripper 3 is a little too expensive for you, then the 10980XE is a good chip for the price, and it manages to keep the platform relevant for now. I think for PC enthusiasts, though, the fact that the X299 platform is just feeling a little bit dated and underwhelming might be a significant deterrent. One last closing note. AMD just announced the 3990X, 64 cores, 128 threads, Threadripper 3 for the same platform, TRX40, launching in 2020. That's all we know for now, but wow. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll put links to as much of this stuff as I can down in the description, and let me know in the comments if you're thinking at all about building a high-end desktop PC, and if so, which of these two platforms you might be interested in. A huge thank you once again to Kyle for the collaboration on this video, and even Lyle. I mean, he did steal my Threadripper 3s, but maybe his goal in the end was to bring us together for this video and benefit all of you viewers at home and have a nice collaboration. That, that makes me feel kind of warm and fuzzy inside. Thanks, Lyle. Anyway, guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my store uh, at paulshardware.net if you want to buy shirts and other cool stuff. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. My print worked perfectly. Now I may proceed with an even more devious phase two. <laughs>